Good afternoon and welcome to another live lesson with me, Anna English, here on English Like a Native. This is the start of a brand new series. Those of you who joined me for the A to Z of British slang words, you'll know how this kind of thing works. I set a number of particular items each week and we go through a complete list. And as you can tell from the title, today we are doing phrasal verbs. We are learning English phrasal verbs because you are always asking me to cover phrasal verbs because they're a very common feature of the English language. And rather than breaking it down into um, phrasal verbs for the kitchen, phrasal verbs for work, I thought I would just do all of them because there are lots of them and it's very difficult to break them down into different segments. So I'm going to cover 10 every session. We're going to practice them together. I'm going to help to correct some of your sentences using these phrasal verbs and we're going to get this nailed. We're going to get it down. So just before I get started, let me know that you can hear me and that you can see me all right. It is a little bit dark. Let me see what I can do with that. Is that a bit better? Brighter? <laughs> Ta-da! Hello, fantastic, great. You're all saying you can hear me and see me. Brilliant. I've got my patron Skype room open as well. So patrons, if you would like to do your writing practice in the Skype room, then I won't miss your comments. Otherwise, let's get started, shall we? So, number one phrasal verb is abide by abide by. Now I did do an individual video for this particular word, um, for these, this particular phrase of verb, sorry. So you should already have an idea of what this means, but if you abide by something, it means you accept, obey, or follow a decision or a rule. Okay? So you abide by the rules. You abide by someone's decision. You abide by the law. Okay, so feel free now to start trying to put this um, phrasal verb into a sentence. Let's practice each one because by practicing, by just writing it down, it helps to lock it into your memory. And the example sentence I've given here is, students should abide by the school rules. Students should abide by the school rules. Okay. So I want you to give me another sentence using abide by. But while you're doing that, <clears throat> excuse me, while you're doing that, I'm going to uh, move on to the next one. So number two is, um, it's account for, account for. Let me just hide, oh, I can't hide the other one. Okay, so account for. Um, to account for something is to explain it. It explains a situation, it explains something that's happened, it accounts for it. So here the example sentence is, they were unable to account for the missing items. They were unable to explain the missing items. Um, so let me think if I can come up with some other examples. If, um, if I bake a batch of cupcakes. I bake 10 cupcakes and I leave them on the side to cool down. And in the morning I come in and there's eight cupcakes. And I'm like, hang on a minute. When I went to bed last night, there were 10 cupcakes, but now there's only eight cupcakes. Where are the other two cupcakes? And everybody else in the house is like, I don't know. I don't know. I've never, I've, I've, I've never even seen that there was 10 cupcakes. I don't know what happened to the other two cupcakes. Who knows? Then the dog walks in and the dog has cake crumbs around his mouth. Then I can say, ah, oh, I think, I think that accounts for the missing cupcakes. The dog ate them. So the dog's presence accounts for the missing cupcakes. And I'll say to the dog, listen, if you're going to stay in my house, you have to abide by my rules. Okay? No eating my cupcakes, you naughty doggy. Okay? <laughs> Good. So, um, some of you are writing sentences now. 
Um, one of you has written, could you account for me the question, please? We don't use account in the same clear way that, so you can't say, could you account for me? Meaning, could you explain to me? It doesn't work like that. Um, it tends to be when a situation arises and you're saying, what explains the situation? And that's when you would use the phrase of verb account for. Okay. But you wouldn't use account for to mean explain to me. Could you account? Could you explain to me? No, we don't use it in that way. Um, someone else, has anyone else used this? Um, you should abide by the rules of the game, says Sky, using abide by. That's correct. You should abide by the rules of the game. Very good. Um, um, it's better to abide the majority decisions. So Francis has written this sentence. Let's have a look at this together. Oops. So Francis has written this sentence here. It's better to abide the majority of decisions. Now, because it's a phrasal verb, you have to use po both parts of it. The phrasal verb is abide by, so you need by in there. It's better to abide by the majority, and we're missing the word of here, and this should be a capital letter. It is better to abide by the majority of decisions. Oh, full stop. And then that would be a correct sentence. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's come back. Has anyone else used the phrasal verb account for that I can work on here? Um, hello, David. Yes, nice to see you here too. Thank you. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Ah, here we go. The boy said to a girlfriend she needs to account for yesterday because he saw her with a flirty man. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. Um, it would be better if... Let's just have a look at this together. So, capital letter at the beginning, always a capital letter at the beginning of a sentence. The boy said to his girlfriend, so make sure you add in the possessive, whose girlfriend are we talking about? The boy said to his girlfriend um, that, let's put that in there, that she needs, um, the boy said to his girlfriend that she needs to account for yesterday's, I would put yesterday's behaviour. The boy said to his girlfriend that she needs to, that she needs to, this feels a little odd. It all feels a bit odd. The boy said to his girlfriend that she needs to account for yesterday's behaviour because it's obviously spelt slightly wrong because he saw her with a flirt, flirty man. So the man was flirty is what you're suggesting here. But I think what you mean is that she was flirting with a man. So you could say he saw her flirting with a man rather than she's just with a man who is being flirty. You're saying she is flirting. So um, the boy said to his girlfriend that she need, I want to say needed here. The boy said to his girlfriend that she needed to account for yesterday's behavior because he saw her flirting with a man. That feels much better. Okay. All right, I hope this helps. It's very hard doing live um, corrections. Julia, thank you so much. Julia very sweetly has dropped a super chat. Julia, of course, as you know, you are a regular super ch super chat contributor. If you leave a super chat, then you are entitled to any of the notes that we've been working on. And so I will give you a copy of these phrasal verb notes. Just drop me a message and let me um, know if you want these ones or any other notes and they are yours. Thank you so much. Um, for those of you who don't know what a super chat is, it's a small contribution towards the channel. It helps me to cover my bills. It helps me to eventually invest in new equipment so that I can bring more and more and better quality lessons to all of you. Um, and as my way of saying thank you, I will obviously give you any notes that I've used during those lessons. Um, super chats are available via the little icon below the comment section only during the live lesson. So if you're not watching this live, 
then um, I'm afraid that function isn't available to you. All right, so let's carry on. So we've had abide by and account for. Number three on the list is ache for, to ache for something. An ache is like a dull pain. So you might feel an ache in your arm if you bang your arm, or you might have a headache, a headache. But if you ache for something, then it means that you desire it or you desire someone a lot, like you're, you're in pain because you want it so much. And the example sentence I've given here is, whoop, we have been preparing for this competition for years. I am aching for that trophy. I'm aching for that trophy. I want it so badly it hurts, is basically what I'm saying. So I want you to give me a sentence that uses ache for. What are you aching for? What do you desire so much that it hurts? Place it into a sentence for me and I will try to correct it for you. And while you're doing that, I'm going to move straight on to the next one, which is act on, act on. So to act on something, I've given two um, versions of this because there are slightly different um, meanings. So the first one, to act on something is to take action. Here, I'll show you. To take action because you've received advice, an order or a recommendation. So for example, if you give the police some information, the police may act upon that information. Sometimes we say upon and sometimes we say on. They're both the same. So the police may act on that information. Um, if I give you a recommendation, for example, I think audiobooks are a fantastic way to help you learn English. And I always recommend them. And there is a link down in the description box below for a free audiobook trial for 30 days. Now I've given you this recommendation, you might decide to act on that recommendation and go and click on that link and download some incredible audiobooks. So we can use it for recommendation or I might give you some advice. I advise you to um, I advise you to practice English every single day for at least 10 minutes. You might act on that advice. Okay, so it's to take action because of a recommendation, advice or an order. And so the example sentence I've given here is the teacher refused. Oh, there should be a little two there. The teacher refused to act on a fashion tip given to him by his students. And a tip is another little word that means advice to give someone a tip. Um, the teacher refused to act on a fashion tip given to him by his students. Obviously, the students think that he could dress a little, a little better and they've given him some fashion advice and he said, no, thank you. I'll keep dressing the way I like to dress. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's have a look at patron Steffi. Hi, Steffi, how are you? You said um, in your live lesson, eight minutes late. Sorry, that's okay. I forgive you. What's the difference between aching for and longing for? There's no difference really. They're both the same. You're just using different words. If you long for something, then you desire something. You're feeling oh, desperate for it. And it's exactly the same. Aching for just suggests that you're in a bit more pain, I guess. I ache for it. It hurts me. Um, so they are, they have the same meaning, but maybe just a slightly different feel. To ache for something is to hurt for something and to long for something is just to want something terribly. So I hope that helps, but pretty much the same. Okay, so you're all giving me lots of example sentences here. Um, Sky says, I'm aching for speaking fluent English. Okay. I'm aching for speaking. Aching for speaking, it feels odd because you're using two ING's next to each other. That feels weird. I'm aching for speaking. I'm aching for speaking. Oh no, it just doesn't feel right. In this scenario, I would change the phrasal verb and put I'm aching to speak. And I'd change this into the infinitive. I'm changing, I'm aching to speak fluent English. But then that takes away the phrasal verb, right? So let's go back. How can we use the phrasal verb with this kind of meaning? I'm aching for... Um, 
I would say in my English study, in my, <laughs> let's completely change the sentence, in my English studies, I am aching for fluency. Ah, fluency. That's how I would put it. In my English studies, I am aching for fluency. It is a roundabout way of doing it, um, but that makes more sense. Feels feels better. Um, Lovers are aching for seeing for seeing again soon, says Alan. Um, I would change that as well. So let's have a look at your sentence that you've given. You've written. Um, Lovers are aching for seeing again soon. Now this suggests, because you're saying seeing again, you're suggesting they've lost their eyesight and they can't see. And this is suggesting that they're aching to actually regain their sight so they can see through their eyes once again. So what you need to do is add the person or the object um, of which this is aimed at. They're aching for seeing each other again soon, oops, each other again soon, full stop. However, aching for seeing, again, this feels weird, ing, ing, it feels odd. Lovers are aching to see, again, I would use the infinitive if I was just correcting this without thinking about phrasal verbs. This would make perfect sense. L I would say the lovers as well. The lovers are aching to see each other again soon. However, if we were going to try and use the phrasal verb, the lovers, okay, so the lovers, I would say, haven't seen each other for a long time. And therefore, no, and are aching to, no, aching for one another aching for one another. That would make more sense. The lovers haven't seen each other for a long time and are aching for one another. <laughs> okay. Gosh, English is difficult. I didn't think phrasal verbs were that difficult until you start trying to work on sentences and you realise they're quite tough. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. Um, I'm going to just clean up these notes here. So we've got We've done abide by, account for, ache for, act on, meaning to take action because someone's given you advice, um, an order or a recommendation. But act on can also mean just to simply affect something. So you could say that the cleaning product that you've bought acts on greasy, stubborn stains. Or the example sentence I've given here, the serum acts on frizzy hair. Okay. So that's nice and easy. Um, has anyone else used a sentence, used act on in a sentence here? I can't see. And if you're not watching this live, then do feel free to still practice your sentences down below in the comments because I will still, if I get a chance, come and correct them for you. So the next one here is act out. Act out. If you act something out, very simply, you perform it. You perform it with actions and gestures. And so a very obvious sentence I've given here is this, the theatre company will act out the entire story on stage. The theatre company will act out the entire story on stage. Okay. I could say to you, um, uh, oh, I, I, went to, I went to Covent Garden today and there was this lady and she was dancing in a really strange way. I can't really explain it. Let me act it out for you. And so I say, let me physically show you with actions and gestures. Let me act it out for you. And so then I just start doing it and say, she was dancing like this. I am acting it out. <laughs> okay. So act out. Nice and easy. Um... Pituitary glands act on um, amal. That's a very difficult sentence for me to read because that's using medical jargon that I 
can't pronounce easily. Let's have a look at it. Um, pituitary glands. I think that's supposed to be an S. Pituitary glands act on, so we take off the S, act on hypothalamus. Oh, medical terms do give me the shivers. They're so difficult. Okay, but glands act on. Glands act on. Okay, so act out nice and easy. Um, ba, 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 ba. Steffi has given an example here as well. If you don't want to miss the opportunity to sign up for a free movie ticket, you better act on it now. Perfect. Perfect. Very good. Right, let's have a look where we're up to. Number seven. Great. <laughs> Okay, number seven is also to act out. If someone acts out and they're not actually physically performing something, then they might be behaving badly because they're unhappy or upset. And it's often in a way that you're not aware of. Um, so, for example, here we've got, um, this environment is not suitable for children, let alone adults. I'm not surprised that the children act out regularly. So if someone is behaving in a bad way because they're upset or unhappy, maybe they're sulking, maybe they're crying, maybe they're hitting things, breaking things, they're just behaving badly and you're not sure why they're doing it. They're acting out. They're, it's like you're about to say they're acting out of character. So it's not typical for them, they're acting out. So normally we use this when we're talking about children, the children are acting out. Number eight is very similar to act out. It's to act up. Now, I used to hear this a lot as a child. Stop acting up. Don't act up tonight. And again, it means behave badly or not as expected. So you might ask me, how has my day been? And I could say, terrible, actually. Um, I was taking the children to school and they started acting up. And I just... I just lost my temper, I started shouting at them and then everybody was looking at me and I felt so embarrassed. And I hate it when they act up in public. Okay. Um, Stunning Lad, hello, nice of you to join me. Stunning Lad's always such a super help. Um, Stunning Lad has put the example sentence, my computer is acting up. Yes, yes, our technology is constantly acting up just at the point that we need it. Like if you need to use your sat nav on your phone because you're lost then the battery will die. Or if you need to do a live lesson, <laughs> your computer will suddenly just start acting up and you can't do the live lesson properly. Great, okay. So, um, oh, someone's saying, is it snowing in your country? Apparently so. It's supposed to be st um, snowing up north somewhere. Not in London, not yet. Okay, so that's number eight. Um, oh, let me give you the example sentence. The example sentence I've given for acting up is, his coffee machine is acting up again. So let's buy him a new one for his birthday. And I should probably just put a little comma in there. Fantastic. So the next one on the list is add on. Add on. And this is to include in a calculation. So the example sentence I've given here is, Shane has confirmed that he is coming on the trip. So add him onto the list. Okay, Shane has confirmed that he's coming on the trip, so add him onto the list. Nice and easy. Okay, and the last one for today is add up. To add up, and this is to make a mathematical total. And the example sentence I've given here is, perhaps it doesn't seem like we've spent a lot, but when you add it all up, it's a lot of money. Perhaps it doesn't seem like we spent a lot, but when you add it all up, it's a lot of money. That's always the case, isn't it? You go on a day out, you think, I'm not going to spend very much today. You buy a cup of coffee, you buy a train ticket, you buy your lunch, you buy a little trinket, you buy an entry into a museum or something like that. Then you might buy a little bus tour ticket and then you buy another little snack and another coffee and then you have to pay to go to the toilet because it's London. And before you know it, you add it all up and you've spent a fortune. 
That, that was a very expensive day, especially in London, goodness me. So let's have a couple more example sentences from you guys. I've got Amal says children can act up Oh, this is interesting. So Amal has put this. Let's have a look at this together. She's put, children can act up their fantasies in a secure environment. It's not a bad sentence. It's just the wrong phrasal verb. So here this should be act out. Children can act out. So remember, act out. Let's have a look. Act out meant... Mm, act out meant to perform something with actions and gestures. Yeah, and that's the one we wanted. So, oh, here we go. Children can act out their fantasies in a secure environment. So that works. And obviously a full stop there. Good. Any more? So, oh, Steffi's been writing here. Let's have a look at what Steffi's writing in the patron room. Um, on my way to work today, my car started acting up. Perfect. Well done, Steffi. And you've also said, James said he went to the library after school, but something is not adding up. Good. I would say, but something does not add up. However, the way you've put it is fine as well. And this just feels more natural, but something does not add up. Or doesn't make it easier. But something doesn't add up. Oops, two T's. <laughs> but something doesn't add up is what I would say. Okay, what else have we got? Um... Oh, one of you is complaining that I didn't consider your examples. Obviously, there's lots of comments and I've got lots of windows open here. So I'm trying to control lots of things, which means if I don't answer your comment, I'm not ignoring you. Obviously, I care about all of you and I would love to be able to correct all of you. But it's pretty difficult because there's lots of comments here. OK, so learning, mutual learning, learning from watching other people being corrected also can be helpful. And feel free, guys, to kind of help each other in the chat room as well. If you see a comment and you feel very confident that you are secure in the knowledge of phrasal verbs and you feel you can help someone else, then help someone else. OK. Um, um, Sabitu says, I'd never act up in public. Very good. Perfect sentence. Um, my knee has been aching, acting up recently. Sorry, recently. Louisa, very good. My knee has been acting up recently. Perfect. Um, I came here late. What does act up mean? Or you'll have to scroll back. You'll have to scroll back on the video um, and see those examples. Okay. So guys, if this has been your first class, I've seen one of you just said this is your very first time here, then please do click on that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified every time I'm live, then click on the notification bell, which is right next to the subscribe button. Okay, and then you'll get a little email saying, Anna is live, come and join if you can, yay. Um, I will be releasing videos every weekday as much as I can. Maybe not tomorrow because something special is happening tomorrow. For those of you who don't know, I have an adventure channel and I'm always going on adventures. And tomorrow I'll be doing my training as a scuba diver because I'm about to go off and do some scuba diving in Egypt as part of my adventure channel vlogging stuff. So tomorrow I will be releasing a video but it might not be bang on four o'clock because I'll probably be underwater acting out my safety maneuvers and everything I need to know to be a scuba diver. Um, but Every day, usually, unless something crazy is happening, every day at four o'clock. The next live lesson will be on Thursday at four o'clock. So hopefully you'll be able to join me there. Um, and we'll carry on with another 10 phrasal verbs. If you would like to contribute towards this channel, then I'm always looking for people to do translations. And I'm even looking for people to transcribe the English subtitles. So if you are very advanced with English and you would like to contribute subtitles on any of my videos, short ones, long ones, whichever, go onto the video you want to translate for me, click on the dot, 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 or the more button and you'll see translate. And then you can add your language to the title, the description or the subtitles. And that will be really, really helpful for me and for anyone in your country who is not as confident with um, English listening. 
Um, and if you want to go a step further, but also receive rewards for your contributions, then you can consider becoming a patron. Patrons receive a lot of rewards in the style of eBooks, notes from lessons, sometimes um, Skype calls privately with me, private messages with me. Um, some even get to join me on WhatsApp um, and also access to the Skype room where you will all be answered. Uh, the link for Patreon is down below if you want to check that out in more detail. Otherwise, I will see you for another lesson tomorrow. Thanks for joining me. Lots of love from London. Take care. Mwah. Goodbye.